So to make it easier to add authentication and authorization to NCP servers, uh, we've partnered up with auth providers like Stitch, uh, where Max works, uh, to be able to make it easier for developers to set this up, um, whether it's a brand new service that you now want to expose through MCP or an existing service that might already have its uh, login page API endpoints auth that you just want to now connect to the AI agents world. Uh, but maybe now I can pass it on to Max to talk a bit about the Stitch integration, um, what all developers should consider when thinking about auth and MCP. Yeah, absolutely. So the cool thing about MCP is, um, I mean, there's a lot of new stuff going on, but there's also a lot of really old ideas. And we've been sharing data between applications on the internet for a pretty long time now. And we know how we want to do it already. Um, and we know that OAuth has kind of emerged as the, the default standard. And the MCP spec has aligned on OAuth as the, the, the method for communication between uh, servers and clients and the, the method for, for authorization and authentication. And that's great because that means that we can think about MCP clients the exact same way we think about OAuth clients. And there's already a pretty rich history of, you know, how you want to manage consent, how you want to share your data, how you want to revoke access and manage these credentials. And Stitch is a collection of uh, APIs that helps you add authentication and authorization to your, your product. And now we're also a collection of APIs that allows you to turn yourself into an OAuth server. Uh, so I guess, is it is it demo time? It sounds like demo time. Yes. Demo time, yes. I've, this is, I've been <laughs> so stoked to get to demo time, yes. All right, I'm gonna see, see how this goes. We're sharing the whole screen. So, oh, look at that. You see my, uh, my login screen right now? Yes. Yeah. All right, so uh, Stitch has two uh, product verticals. We've got a, a vertical for kind of consumer facing SaaS products, and then we've got a vertical for, uh, for B2B SaaS products. And I'll, I'll try to run through both of them pretty quickly. Um, but here, I'm gonna log in, and I've got a wonderful to-do app with some great data in it. And I can go and add to do's. Uh, and if I go and I take my uh, server side event URL, my MCP URL, and I drop it into the MCP inspector, then this is going to kick off an OAuth flow. And I can uh, come in and I can grant the MCP inspector access to my account. And now all of those to-dos appear as resources. And I've got different actions that uh, the MCP inspector can take on behalf of me. So I might be able to create a new to-do. And that'll run and I'll get some output. And this is exactly the, the tools that an agent will be able to invoke. They'll be able to use the MCP protocol and list all of these tools dynamically and figure out what's going on. And now the server knows that this agent is acting on behalf of me and I've granted it consent. And if I come over here, I get to see my MCP to do. So that's great. That's cool. That's our consumer product. What I'm really excited about is our B2B product. And so I had to make a, a B2B to-do app. And the, the most B2B concept I could think of was objectives and key results. So here's our objective and key result to-do app. Um, and very similar as before, I've got a URL that I can plug in. And let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, doing it live. Let's try resetting some stuff. That, that's how we know it's a live demo. <laughs> <laughs> and so 
Stitch uh, has an RBAC product that this ties into. Uh, we're granting this uh, MCP client specific scopes that tie back to specific roles and permissions in our platform. Um, and what's really interesting about this is it's tied into the logged in uh, members permissions. So I am right now logged in as an administrator. I have access to do everything. And that means I can grant the server access to do everything. So if I hit allow, to do. Now we get all of these objectives and key results in here. And we also get a similar set of tools to create new objectives, uh, alter key results, delete key results, and so on. Um, and now going back over to this member management screen, we see I've got different users in here. I'm currently logged in as our CEO admin user. But if I log in as someone with a different set of permissions, I'm going to be able to grant a different set of permissions to the MCP server. And if I go over here, that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. Uh, so now I'm logged in as a manager. Managers have a different set of permissions from CEOs. Uh, in our editor view, they can't create and delete objectives, but they can edit key results. So they've got permission to do some things, not all the things. And now when I go in through this uh, OAuth authorization flow, then I see I have permission to grant some of these. Uh, I can grant read access to objectives and I can grant uh, create, delete and update access to key results, but I can't grant the manage objective scope because I don't have that permission myself. So when I come in and I hit allow, then we get uh, back to the same screen. And now, oh, that's fun. That's what happens when you run the MCP inspector a couple times in a row. Yeah. Well, and Max, while you're doing this, uh, a lot of people may have never seen the MCP inspector. Mm -hmm. Can you give like a quick, because this is, like this blew my mind. I, the first time I used it, I was like, where is this? Can you, can you give like 30 seconds on MCP Inspector too? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, a tool made by the MCP uh, organization on GitHub. Um, it's an open source tool and it's essentially uh, dev tools for the MCP server. Um, and it allows you to invoke all the, the tools, view the resources, the prompts, uh, and get like a pretty low level overview um, and lots of interesting ways to, to debug the services you're making. So uh, over at Stitch, we're in the business of helping people make MCP servers. And I spend a lot of my time uh, in the inspector uh, using it kind of the same way I'd use network tools uh, if I was debugging a regular application. So good. I, I don't know about you. Before this, I was just in Claude trying to trigger my MCP all the time, which was like, fine but a little annoying and so uh if you haven't been using this and you've been doing what i did uh it's a huge uh lifestyle upgrade and if um the inspector is really great for um debugging purposes um but also if you want to try out a fully remote mcp client uh, that connects to mcp servers i highly recommend checking out uh our our workers ai playground that we've built uh, this allows you, you can go there, you can connect to an MCP server, and it has different models that you can use when you chat with it. And so this gives you a bit more of that experience where you can ask it, where you can integrate it with your Slack MCP server and then ask it, hey, what, uh, what chats do I have in my channels that are waiting for me? Can you respond to this? Um, and if you want to take it even a step further and see what will it look like to um, use Claude or Cursor or existing MCP clients that don't support remote yet, um, but to talk to remote MCP servers, we've actually built out um, a connector package. It's called MCP Remote that allows you to connect any local MCP client to a remote MCP server. And so that way you can see that end-to-end -end experience a bit better um, and see the power of it. And it will take you through the authentication flow. Um, and what it does is it 
is it essentially takes the STDIO request and upgrades it to SSC uh, when talking to the remote server. Okay. But hopefully a lot of these local MCP clients natively support support remote uh, in the next month or so, which I think will be really exciting. Yes, huge plus one. Sorry, Max, we, we geeked out. We derailed you by geeking out. You can, you can get back to the, the demo, but it's just, uh, it's so fun. Yeah, the only, it, this is gonna be a, a fun transition because the one thing I wanted to show you guys was it not working. Um, because now, so I'm still logged in as that manager persona with that limited set of permissions. And if I try to add a, a new objective, then this should fail. Oh, this sometimes happens when I run the MCP inspector in multiple tabs. It doesn't, it doesn't love that. So we're going to try one last time. You're just really getting to show off that off flow too, you know? It's <laughs> oh yeah. So we see that this uh, member doesn't have the permission to do the thing that we're trying to do. And because we, we know who the member is, we, we understand their identity. We're able to evaluate that um, even when it's coming through uh, an MCP client. Uh, and so that means that we can make MCP uh, clients and servers just as secure as we make, uh, you know, classic uh, REST APIs. And we get to reuse all of the, the same tools that we already have. And that's pretty cool. Uh, and, and Max, you've done something I personally thought impossible is you've demoed OKRs to me in a way that I found interesting <laughs> and exciting. So <laughs> I feel like you get kudos for that. Max, I know you've been deep in the sauce of auth and MCPs. For somebody building out an MCP server that wants to lock down access to different tools based on roles and permissions, um, what advice would you give to them? How would you recommend that they build this out? Um, I feel like you probably have a lot of learnings um, <laughs> from everything you've built. Yeah, I, th I think it's still very uh, early days with a lot of things regarding um, auth that we'll, we'll see more stuff coming out. Uh, my, my number one piece of advice is try to tie into your existing system. You're already exposing your data in a secure way. Uh, the client is just a new type of identity that you're exposing this data to. And use the, the same fundamental tools that you've been using and you're going to be okay. You know, try not to invent uh, anything new on the, you know, data access front. Um, where we should be trying to figure uh, some new stuff out is is how do we, you know, expose clients to, how do we let clients discover data? Uh, Dina, I remember you talking about uh, the Google Doc sharing experience before. I think that's so interesting. How do we, you know, give a, a client access to a single instance of a doc uh, in, a, in a way where that client doesn't know that that document exists before it gets access. Um, I think that the, the UI and the UX around that is something that we have to figure out, but the underlying security primitives of how do we share data, it's exactly the same as a, a classic REST API.